Did you know that you have three options to sign your child's IEP? Well, today is my part two of my three part series on how to sign your child's IEP. So if you didn't see last week's Facebook Live, go back and listen to that because I give you the three options to sign your child's IEP. But today I'm gonna to be focusing on how to ask for an IEP draft prior to your IEP so that you can be successful with your IEP outcome and be more likely to sign your IEP and use one of those three options that I talked about in last week's live. And then next week's part three of my three part series, I'm going to be teaching you how to write a partial agreement, which is when you're in dissent to certain issues in your IEP, but you still wanna sign your IEP, you would write a what's called a partial agreement, and that's gonna be in next week's Facebook Live. So today, I'm gonna to be talking about how to request a draft IEP. But before I get into that, please leave your comments and please like and share this video because it, I'd love to hear from you in your comments, parents, if you have questions about how to request a draft of your child's IEP or the different options that I've been teaching in my three-part series on how to sign your child's IEP. So for the past 24 years, I've been using all of these strategies and tools uh, to uh, be successful with my clients in having uh, their IEP meeting outcomes successful for their children so that they can get the education that they deserve uh, and they, their rights are um, not violated and that they, they and to teach parents their rights under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. So I'm going to get into the three points now on how you can request a draft of your child's IEP. So point number one is you've got to request the draft in writing. So you send an email to your case carrier. Your case carrier is all, always your RSP teacher, your resource teacher, your special education teacher. Your, that's your case carrier. So you're gonna send an email to your case carrier and you're going to say, I am requesting a draft of my child's IEP and you're gonna do that prior to your meeting. Now, why do you need a draft of your IEP? Because you're gonna be able to look at that draft and prepare for a successful IEP meeting. Now, they're not gonna give you a draft if you don't request it, parents. They don't just automatically send out drafts to parents prior to a meeting. In fact, they never do unless you ask. So you must ask for it and then your teacher will send it to you. And it is your right to receive a draft prior to your meeting. It is also a right for you to receive any reports of assessments that are going to be reviewed at your child's IEP meeting. So if you if you have an assessment that's going to be looked at, assessment findings, any kind of an assessment, a psychological assessment, occupational therapy assessment, speech and language assessment, um, assistive technology assessment, physical therapy assessment, whatever assessment it is, you have the right to receive a copy of that report to review those findings prior to your IEP so that you can be prepared to discuss those things that are offered and I'll look at all the uh, test scores uh, and do research, um, uh, make highlights on what you'd understand and even contact that assessor prior to the meeting to talk about questions and to have them uh, uh, interpret their findings with you prior to the meeting so you can be more prepared to be fully informed and to be a equal IEP team participant during that IEP meeting. So uh, point number two is you're going to review your IEP draft, okay? And you're going to be looking for three components in that IEP draft. And those components are going to be, number one, it's going to show you the previous goals of last year. So the last year's goals, they're going to have it all listed there and they're gonna say, uh, met, not met, or partially met. And so those it's important parents, whether your child has met, not met, or partially met last year's goals. Because if your child hasn't met their goals, 
then they're not progressing towards their uh, um, education and, and towards their goals in uh, in going from grade to grade as every child, every neurotypical child would be doing in progressing from grade to grade, year to year, learning one year's worth of growth in education. That's what's expected of special needs kids on IEPs as well. So if your child, child is not meeting their goals, then something's wrong. So they, either they need to look at that goal, they need to look at, you know, are they working on the goal? Uh, is it is the goal too lofty? It has your child, um, um, uh, do they need more modalities or interventions or uh, more visuals or why hasn't your child met that goal? So you have to have that discussion at your IEP meeting if your child isn't meeting their goals. So you wanna look at the previous goals to see if your child has progressed and made progress towards those goals. And the next thing, the next component is, uh, is the present levels of academic and functional performance. And that's PLOP, present levels of performance. Sometimes it's PLOAFP, academic and functional performance. But what that is, is where your child is currently functioning academically and um, and uh, socially and any every other way in their education, uh, how, how they're functionally performing uh, at school. So the present levels of performance is the baseline in which they write your goals. So when you look at your goals, the goals on the left-hand side usually say the baseline of where your child is right now. And so that baseline is where they start and writing a goal. And then they're gonna look at one year that you want your child to be one year's progress and that's the annual goal. So here's the baseline, here's the annual goal and there's one year's of progress within that period of time. So uh, present levels of performance are extremely important. So you read those present levels of performance. You'll have that opportunity when you get the draft. And if you don't agree with those present levels of performance, if it says your child's functioning too low and you think your child's higher in their present levels of performance, or maybe they're higher than you believe your child is functioning at. So it's important for you to be informed and knowledgeable on what they're saying regarding your child's function functional and academic present levels of performance. Uh, the third thing that's going component's going to be in your draft is the um, new goals. They're, then, then they're going to offer the goals for the upcoming school year. So those are all new goals. If old goals were not met, we're going to rewrite those goals into a new goal for the upcoming school year. I'm sorry, there's a lot of um, noise in the background. That's why I was late today in doing my Facebook Live. There's a lot going on. Uh, there Also, Facebook wouldn't let me go live. So I'm having stuff at my home. I'm having stuff on Facebook. So I'm just trying to get this information through to you guys and do my Facebook Live today. So I apologize for the noise in the background. Um, so you're going to get your new goals and you're going to look at those new goals. And if there's goals that you might want to add it that might not be there, um, if there are goals that you want changed and you want to revised, if they're not measurable, if they're not specific, make sure you're aware of the new goals are going to be offered for the next school year. So those are the three components you're gonna get in your draft when they give you your draft prior to your meeting so you can prepare for a successful outcome. So the next thing, I, the third point I have is make a list of your concerns and requests. So as you go through those, those three components, you're gonna be writing down the things you wanna ask about, the things you're concerned about, the things you wanna change, and you also wanna make a list of what you want to request at your child's IEP meeting. If it's an increase in speech and language, if you're concerned that your child's being bullied at school, whatever other requests you might have or concerns you might have, you make a list for that. And you, because when you get to the meeting, parents, you know 
that you're you're nervous, you forget things, um, it might go too long and you forgot to, to get in what you wanted to say. Um, sometimes there are time restraints. So make sure you make a list and you prepare yourself for your IEP meeting because otherwise it probably is going, you're going to get to the end and you're gonna go, oh my gosh, I forgot to say this or oh my gosh, they didn't you know talk about that and I wanted to present this issue. And so making a list and being prepared getting the draft prior to the meeting. These are all steps to take to be successful uh, at your child's IEP meeting, okay? Um, so uh, parents, I'd love to give you more information regarding uh, your, getting your draft prior to your meeting, uh, preparing for your IEP. Uh, you can please join my uh, private Facebook group. It's called the Special Education Parent Empowerment Network. Uh, pl please be sure to answer the questions because if you don't answer the questions, I don't know who you are and I can't accept you into the group. And I also have a uh, monthly membership called the uh, P Parent Brigade, uh, the em Informed Empowered Parent Brigade, IEP Parent Brigade. And uh, that is a monthly membership in which I uh, train and coach parents on their IEPs to be successful uh, to get the, what they need for their child uh, and to meet their child's unique needs. Also, I'm going to be launching my ultimate IEP parent empowerment course. So this is an intensive course that teaches parents from A to Z, um, IDEA, your parent rights and how to become an empowered very strong advocate for your own child so you don't have to hire an advocate because you're going to be your own child's advocate if you take this course you are going to be come out knowing how to advocate for your child it's an intensive course you've got to do the work you got to put the study in but you will be able to advocate for your child after this course and that course is going to be starting on uh april 18th it begins and I'm gonna be doing the launch on April 14th, 15th, and 16th. I'm gonna be teaching on the IEP, on, on all of these things I've been doing in the last couple of weeks on preparing for your IEP, what is an IEP, how to become eligible for an IEP, all of those kinds of things that parents needs to know, what are your parent rights. So April 14th, 15th, and 16th is gonna be it's kind of like a mini course and I'll be launching and talking about the ultimate and IEP program. And then on the 16th, I'm going to make the offer if you would like to, to take part in that program. And it's going to begin on April 18th. And I hope that you will, I will see you there so that you can learn how to become your child's most powerful advocate. I'm Valerie Abrahamian, the IEP Navigator, and I train, assist, and coach parents how to get the IEP their child needs to thrive both in school and in life after high school. And I hope to see you next Monday on my Monday Morning Advocates for Angels Facebook Live. Take care, everybody, and God bless.